talk about turbocharger coking. So within the engine, we know that there are a range of different, let's say temperature profiles within the engine. So combustion temperatures can get up to 1200 odd degrees Celsius. But of course, when it equalizes out and you've got distance between the different engine components in the combustion chamber, plus you have the effect of, of coolants as well, um, oil obviously plays a part in, in pulling heat away from the combustion chamber. So that means that in various parts around the combustion chamber, there are different temperatures. You know, I think it stands to reason, I think it's fairly obvious that exhaust gases, for example, are going to be much hotter than inlet gases, right? Um, because they've, of course they've already been combusted. And the thing with turbochargers is that the exhaust gases are at extremely high temperature. We're talking in the order of, you know, 650 to 450 degrees Celsius. Now, I get it. Right? It's not necessarily going direct to the turbocharger at 450 degrees Celsius, right? Often there's going to be some kind of, let's say, charge air cooler or intercooler, if you want to call it that, you know, so, but nevertheless, the turbocharger sees extremely high temperatures. The challenge with the, with the turbo is that it exists in a reasonably unique lubricating environment compared to the rest of the engine. Let me explain. So this is what a tur turbocharger looks like if you had an exploded view. And the, the main part that we are concerned with from a lubrication standpoint is this single shaft that connects both sides. So you've got the hot and the cold side, right? So that obviously involves both the compressor and the turbine. And everything spins on that one shaft. Now, if it, that shaft is seeing temperatures in the order of hundreds of degrees, compare that to the other shafts in the engine. Does the crankshaft, for example, see temperatures that high? Nowhere near as close, right? Does the camshaft see temperatures as high? Nowhere near as close. So, but remember, it's, it's one common oil system. So the challenge is that we have to lubricate this particular shaft and its associated bearings at a much higher temperature, which means that the oil viscosity is going to be much thinner, right? So that's the challenge. The second challenge is that it also rotates much faster than any of the other components, right? We're talking up to 300,000 RPM. And so that run, makes us run into a couple of issues. First of all, we know that high temperatures accelerate the oxidation process. What can aggressive oxidation cause? It causes sludge, varnish, and ultimately coke, right? So coke is, if you like, the, the end state of a lot of varnish and sludge, and it's effectively when oil has been burnt in place. And that's what the really, really high temperatures in a turbocharger can do. It can effectively burn that oil. Now, why is that in and of itself a problem? It can be a problem for a few reasons. First of all, if we end up with an oil starvation issue, right? So we have so so many so much gum and, and so many deposits that it prevents the access of lubricant to the bearing. Well, if you're spinning it in the order of hundreds of thousands of RPM, that's going to destroy that bearing very, very quickly, right? And so that's how we can get turbo failures. That's how we can get shaft failures. Another instance can be just like soot, sometimes these deposits can be abrasive. Now, abrasive components when something is spinning slowly, don't cause that much damage. But again, at hundreds of thousands of RPM, that is going to cause damage very, very quickly. And so again, this is why turbo coking can become such an issue so quickly. So uh, the reason why turbo coke is such a big issue is because the turbo kind of exists in this unique lubrication environment, right? And the speed that it runs at means that any change to... Uh, the lubrication conditions can destroy those bearings very quickly.